Alright. Um, so Sonic Lost World. Uh. I. Long story short, this game is, like, it's average leaning towards bad. That's, that's the best way I can summarize it. But it's not total crap. Um, you know, and the funny thing is, I really, really want to like it, too. Oh, great. <laughs> I think I got a game over from that. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, it's all right. That's okay. Um, what makes this game bad is um, the control. I mean, well, there's like a couple of things that make it bad, but the control is really what breaks the game. Because con control is so important. If you can't control your character very well, then it the doesn't really matter what the rest of the game is like because you're controlling your character the whole time, you know? The, the control, the movement, that is so important. If you can get the control and movement down, then you've already gotten 80% of the game, maybe even 90% of the game down. So... What makes the control in this game bad is a couple of things. So as you can see, like I'm not I'm not so terrible at this game. I'm actually pretty good at Sonic games. But yet somehow I managed to hit enemies all the time. Um and part of what makes you hit enemies more often than not um is the bad lock-on system. The homing attack, the homing attack in this game is terrible, and also the parkour, and also his limited jump. So you really can't tell here, but like his ability to, the distance he gets when he's jumping from like a standstill is really bad. I mean, I think when he's up to full running ability, like he jumps a little bit further, but as you can see, it's not really that good. And this is especially egregious in the 2D sections of the game. Right. So his jump ability, and then you got the parkour system. Um, so the parkour system, they combined it with the run button. Which wasn't a bad idea, in fact. Like, it... The idea was they wanted to avoid having Sonic smack into walls and stuff. Unfortunately, it didn't really accomplish that, though. What it ended up doing is just making it so that you would stick to walls unintentionally way too often. And that would lead to a lot of unintentional deaths. This mostly happens in 2D, but it happens, it happens in 3D as well. The fact of the matter is, this game would have been a lot better if there weren't any 2D sections at all. I have to emphasize that. 3D Sonic games should not have any 2D sections anymore. If I wanted to play a 2D Sonic game, I would play a real 2D Sonic game. Now, Sonic Mania didn't exist at the time, but we still had plenty of 2D Sonic games that were great. The classic Genesis games and the Sonic Advance series. You know, take your pick. There, there were plenty of good ones. If I wanted to play a 2D Sonic game, I would play a real 2D Sonic game. We want 3D Sonic in a 3D Sonic game. That's where the meat of the game should be. That's where the whole game should be. And it's where they should focus their effort, efforts on. Uh, as I mentioned before briefly, the homing attack is bad. Um, he'll lock onto multiple enemies... Um, but you don't really have a lot of control over it. And, um... It's kind of hard to really describe. You you kind of ha you just have to play it to really understand what's bad about the homing attack. See how it, it locks on onto multiple uh, things at once? And then he'll automatically uh, attack everything that he's locked onto. The problem is, is that it's inconsistent as to when he can lock on. Sometimes he'll lock on right away. Other times inexplicably he won't lock on even though you're right next to an enemy or something that you're trying to kill and this is really bad especially for boss fights 
and it can get you killed so often. I've died many, many times just because the lock-on didn't work. Um, and also, after he does his, his attack, there's no, like, recovery phase like there is in the other games, and I... Long story short, I just don't know why they didn't make the, the homing attack like it was in the previous games, or better yet, improve the controls so that he doesn't need a lock-on at all. I say this all the time in, in any kind of 3D so Sonic game. The lock-on and homing attack is a crutch for bad controls. That's all it is. If the controls were good, he wouldn't need it. And, you know, you can make the enemies larger so that they're e easier to hit. You know, whatever. There's so many ways they could do it to get away from the crutch of lock-on. And I think it's about time we moved away from it. Now, like I said, I really, really wanted to like this game because like, it's actually like a very pretty game. I mean, it's not like the greatest looking game. It's not even the greatest looking Sonic game. Sonic Unleashed looks better, which is odd because it's much older than this game. But it's on the Wii U. Hey, Forsaken, what's up? I'm in the middle of my review. Um, it's, it's just kind of weird, you know? Uh... But, um, you know, I, I still think the graphics are pretty good. Um, and I really like uh, the the art design of the levels themselves. I think, I think they're pretty good. Unfortunately, the level design is not good. All the levels are these weird tubular, like, they're like cylinders. All the levels are either cylinders, and when they are, when they aren't cylinders, um, they're very flat and boring. Um, that's, you can really see that in the desert level. You know what, actually, let's, let's go to the desert level now, so I can just kind of show it off. Um, you know, when you play the other Sonic games, there's rolling hills, there's multiple pathways, and, um, you know, there's dimensionality, even in the 2D games, there's, there's so many, uh, different, um, different, different kinds of terrain. It's not just the flat, uh, bland environment and look at this see like this is still technically a, a cylinder actually it's just a big one but as you can see like there's no there's no hills it's all very flat and bland um you know there's no slopes no nothing so you know that really takes away from it i i really don't know what what why they decide to go with this it's really was unnecessary. Now I'm going to talk about some of the controversial things like the the run button. Really needs to be talked about. I, I actually think the run button is a good idea. Like you can you can walk around normally like this and then when you hold down the run button you can run. It's a good idea and I think it should return. But it's just they implemented it poorly here. You know, when you go near a, a wall like he automatically runs up the whole damn thing. I like I am literally Okay, I'm pushing towards the wall right now, and then I hit the run button, and then he automatically runs up the whole damn thing. As soon, even if I take my, my finger, my thumb off the, the analog stick, he'll run up the whole thing. And that screws you up so often, because you if you accidentally are near a wall and you hold down the run button, he's just going to do an automated kind of shit like that. And it, it's terrible. So if they just improved that, it would have been so much better. Um, you know, I could go on and on about uh, the control, but I should talk a little bit about what I like about the game. And, um, you know, like I said, the, the graphics are actually pretty good. Um, I think this art design is, is alright. And I like that the level themes, even though the levels are kind of repeated a little bit, you know, like, the cloud area looks very similar to uh, Windy Hill. Um, and the forest level kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Windy Hill, but it's still pretty good. And the music, though, the music is really, really good. I love the Windy Hill theme. And uh, the level themes in the other levels are also really, really good. Oh, great. <laughs> Right when I'm doing the review, it decides the the, the video decides to uh, kind of freeze up on me. Hold on. 
just my luck too. Might be able to recover. Okay, there we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and look, it's not the worst Sonic game. Um, and it's unfortunate that I have to kind of assess its quality or, or describe its qu quality rather by comparing it to worse games. But like, it's not as bad as Sonic Unleashed HD and it's not as bad as Sonic 06 or, um, or, uh, uh Shadow the Hedgehog. Okay, here's another stupid thing, okay? <laughs> since, since, since I'm on a roll, it makes you wall run sometimes in order to get through the levels, right? So here I am. How do I get up here? It's so dumb. Like, it, it wants you to, it wants you to do that, and but it just feels so unnatural. You're going to be struggling with the controls so much, and you should never do that. Like, wall running and wall jumping shouldn't be hard. I mean, you can kind of get used to it, but you never really get fully used to it. Because it just feels so unnatural. And like I said, it's kind of hard to describe why it's bad. You really have to play it yourself to understand just just how, how, how bad it is. But I do want... I, I do... I wish it was so much better because it had so much potential. Um, and yeah, it's better than the aforementioned games. Uh, you know, aesthetically, storyline-wise, like, there's actually some, the story's stupid, but it's mostly inoffensive. Um, there's actually some genuinely funny parts that made me laugh, but it's not an, it's not a, it's not how a Sonic story should be. You know, the game just doesn't take itself very seriously, which I guess makes sense, but, you know, it's, it's a shame that a 2D Sonic game like Sonic Mania or Sonic 3 and Knuckles is able to tell a much better story without uttering a single word. Um, the main bad guys in the game are like some weird... They're just like... They're so generic looking. I forgot what they're called. This, The, the Nefarious Six or whatever. Sinister Seven, whatever. Um, they just look like uh, Pixar rejects, honestly. Like they look like... They look like bad... Bad designs from a Pixar movie. They're so uninspired. They're boring. Uh, they're very cliche. You know, if you compare them to uh, the hard-boiled heavies from Sonic Mania, now that's how you do new enemies right. But not these guys. Other than that, the voice acting is actually pretty decent. Um, for a Sonic game, I guess. I mean, it's not terrible. It's just, you know, the story's not good. So... And, uh, oh yeah, the difficulty. I should mention the difficulty. This game is so cheap. It can be so cheap at times, and unnecessarily so. The Deadly Six is what they're called. Um, yeah, the difficulty is cheap, and it's mostly cheap because of the bad controls, but there's like some stages, like that one stage that I mentioned before, that is basically like Sky Chase Zone from um, Sonic 2, except a million times worse. You're basically tumbling through the air, um, and you can barely control uh, your character. So it's it's so inconsistent, and it's not it's not challenging in a good way. It's challenging in the worst kinds of ways. You know, like when you play Dark Souls, and it's so satisfying, even though it's hard. This game is not like that at all. It's challenging in all the wrong in the, all the wrong ways. So. Oh well. All in all, it is a average Sonic 3D Sonic game. It's unremarkable. And if you never play this game, you're not really missing out on a lot. But like I said, it's not the worst. Um, but it's it should have been so much better. And that is all I got to say. <laughs>